Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a good wherever you are. This is JP here at Brizzy, and we're going to look at the updated blending modes for the image element. Now, blending modes have been there for a while. There's not much application for that, but I think you may just find an application for the image blending overlay, and I'm going to show you how to do that. First, I'll do a simple one, and then I'll do one from beginning, how my workflow usually goes when it comes to this. And I'll even show you where I get the backgrounds and how I convert it into WebP, etc. Let's start with a new blog and you'll soon find out exactly what this is. I'll bring in the background from my existing stock that I have within my library. I'm using WordPress. This is also working in cloud. I've designed, ah, oh, this is actually a nice one, but I'm going to stick to this background here, which I designed within Photoshop. And let's drag it up a little bit, just give it space. And then we bring in images. But before that, let's bring in a column so we can overlay it on the left. And then from here, I'll put an image on the left side. Select and also use an image from our library. Let's go for, okay, I'm going to go for something different. This one here. And then I will resize it by grabbing it. And currently it is set to original. So to resize, I have to go to custom, then I can select and I'm going to drag it like so. So, and let's just reduce the padding at the top and the bottom. Right. And now select the image, go to settings. And then from your styling, you will find that the blending mode appears here in the sidebar on the right. Currently it's set to normal. This kind of blending mode function is very common in photo editors already for many, many years. And it's usually a case of check what works for you. This is a design feature, which means it's stylistic. It doesn't really serve a function. It just adds a little bit of flair, but it really helps often when you want to blend something and you know give that kind of artistic feel to it. So you can start here at the top with color and you will see something very funky happens there. And then there, we go to color burn already something that can work. And now just imagine if you can go back to the image and you add a mask to it, this can become really interesting. Yes, look at that, right in the jiffy. Let's go through a few others. We have color dodge. And usually I like ones like darken. There we go. Others that I also like to use is soft, let's see, multi multiply and overlay. These ones, you see, nice, multiply. And you can find online all the different magic that's happening behind the scenes, how the different pixels are blending the image with the background. I'm already talking a lot of it, but that's kind of what this is all about. Now I'm going to just show you how you can really make this stand out. I'll create a new one and I'm doing this from scratch. I use free pick, no affiliation. It's just the resource that I use. I think it's the most affordable resource on the market in terms of what they offer. And I'm going to search for line background should basically say simple line background let's see oh okay and you will see you get these without the little crown they are actually for free you can use them or if in my case you have a premium membership you can use those let me see if i can find something a little bit more funky but i wanted these line backgrounds so let's go for this one and then i can download it it will give me as eps jpeg and a png I'll download it. And that is pretty quick. Let me just go and open it with an, and I'll drag the JPEG. I'm just going to use that to my downloads. But if you have a look now at the JPEG, this is pretty big. Here at the bottom, it says 1.2 megabyte at 5,500 pixels at 4,000. Uh uh, that's definitely what we don't want. Lately, the, even though I've got Photoshop and all these great apps, I use this online, photop.com. It's free. You can also have a subscription if you want to. If you don't mind the ads on the right side, you use the free version. I love it because it gives me great conversion and compression to put my images in WebP. All I'm going to do is hit Control Command O to open my folder, and then I'll click on this image. It's going to load it in no time. Here is the image. And what I'll do is just export as WebP. Now, WebP, some of you are thinking, what on earth is WebP? WebP is the preferred image compression method for the moment for websites. Before we had bitmap, then we had JPEG, we were using PNG, but lately we really prefer WebP. I'm going to make my width 1920, and I put my quality on 
I find that 50% half quality still gives me great resolution for when I go to my website. You can even go down to 40, which is what I often do. Let's give it a name and I'll say line background, PG, and then save. And it's done. This is all done for free online, photop.com. I'll back to Brizzy. I'll go to my blog and I'll bring in my image. It's this one line background, drag it in, and you can see 46 kilobytes. That's nothing, Louise. Select it. Now, nicely, it's in the back. And now, when you build out all of those features currently, let's bring in an image again. Let's grab one of our images. I'll grab this one over here. And we go to our settings, styling. And blending, and I'm going to hop on down to overlay. Ooh, not overlays, a little to multiply. And look at that, it nicely blends in with the background. Now, this is a pretty big image that I have here, and I've also increased the size of my screen so I can show you things a little bit better. So everything is look a little bit too big. But let's reduce it, and you will see that nice effect, nice blending in with the background. And this way you can go from your backgrounds, you can bring in your images and overlay. From my side, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.